I always struggle a little bit with what to do on the practical side. I mean, I could show you pictures of lining up nutrient bottles and drawing them up and putting them in a bag or bottle, but you basically already know how to do that anyway. So what I want to concentrate on a little bit more today is what I think I see coming based on USP, U.S. Pharmacopeia 797. USP 797 sets out the rules at the federal level, and it's my understanding that anyone who is administering IV solutions has got to go by these rules. Now, I'm not an attorney, so check with your corporate attorney or check with your board or some sort of legal counsel and get information to know what to do about what I'm about to talk about. Because if you're just mixing IVs in a, a nice, clean room uh, that Dr. Ginn has described where no one's coming in and out, it's on air, air filtration system, sink is present, refrigerator, and so on and so on, that's great. That, that's going to get it done most of the time. But if you've got to beat USP 797 rules, which it's my understanding that all pharmacies, all hospitals, all long-term care facilities, everybody else in the world, I think including physician offices, and I know in some states have to go by, then you're going to need a lot more equipment than just what's been described. This is a laminar flow hood, clean air workbench. There's several names for it. Basically, the principle is it takes air in through the top, runs it through a HEPA filter. You have air streams coming out in parallel fashion blowing toward you, so you have an aseptic work environment. This is now required in every pharmacy in this country. Got to be certified by someone every six months as meeting the uh, parameters that are laid out in USB 797. This is, I believe, a four-foot hood. Uh, they come in two, three-foot. Uh, I've seen some physician's offices that have like a nice two or three-foot hood, which is usually adequate for mixing IVs. And this will let you be a step ahead of where you need to be. It makes a nice aseptic environment for, uh, for preparation of your IV. You need to wipe it out initially with 70% alcohol, clean uh, everything, using a lint-free towel, top, bottom, sides, and so on. Do a good job of cleaning it up. Um, swab, obviously, the top of the vials that you're going to be filling if you're going to be mixing some of your own blends, like what a lot of people will do, knowing that they're going to be giving calcium, magnesium, maybe trace minerals. They'll draw all those up and put that particular mixture into one vial ahead of time. Then when it's time to mix the IV, they'll take that one bottle, which has those ingredients in it, draw it out and maybe a couple of other things and they're able to mix their IV. Instead of having to get like 20 bottles off of the shelf, you know, and pull out of every one of them at that time, it's just more efficient use of your time. If you can pull your minerals together or other compatible products together and put them in one bottle, just food for thought. Again, swab the tops. This is the control panel. Uh, of the hood, lights, uh, this is a water gauge uh, showing the airflow is, is what it should be through it. Um, performance certification, this is what I mentioned a moment ago. This company out of Georgia uh, comes every six months and certifies our hood so the board is happy with what we're doing. Everything in a pharmacy has to be logged. Temperature, humidity, cleanliness, who cleaned what, when they did it. Uh, if it's not written down, it's like it doesn't exist. And I have known of cases where pharmacists had to go to court, they made something, patient got sick was it, when it was administered, and I'm telling you, if you don't have the paperwork to back it up, it gets ugly in a hurry. It's like it doesn't exist. You can explain all day long, I did this, I did that, I cleaned up, everything was sterile. If you don't have it documented, it's like it doesn't exist. It's a real killer on time, but it's a necessity. These are nice, uh, showing you your relative humidity and your temperature uh, all on the same instrument. Sterile bottles, uh, there are companies you can buy them from. I have no interest in either Allergy Lab or Greer, but they provide uh, sterile empty vials for your use, and you can, can certainly buy them from them and perhaps other distributors. Color coding for tops is nice. They make green, blue, and a bunch of other colors, and sometimes that will help you uh, in keeping bottles straight as far as what is what. You might want to put you know, a particular mixture of your calcium, magnesium, and trace minerals in a red top bottle or some other color scheme. Again, just a suggestion. 
Um, this is basically just showing a setup of, of, of the way you would arrange things under the hood. If you have the, the parallel streams of clean air coming out at you, you'll realize that you don't need to stack things one behind the other. Otherwise, the bacteria that's coming off of the products in the back is going to be contaminating what's sitting up front. So you need to work from left to right and not from back to front or front to back. Uh, opening a syringe, there again, showing you open it with nothing uh, upstream from you, so to speak. It could be a source of bacteria. Same way with a needle. Swab your top. Pull it out. Do whatever with it. Put it in another vial or whatever. Uh, sometimes if you're filling whoops, small vials, uh, like if you want to put, I think that's a 10 cc vial, and you want to put 8 or 10 cc's in it, uh, if you try to do it without having some kind of a venting mechanism, it'll build up a heck of a lot of pressure and it'll spew out at you and whatnot. So you can put a small needle in just to vent it with, and I'll show you some other options in a minute on how to do that. But that's just a practical way of filling a vial, as you see, without there being a pressure buildup because your air that was on the inside is coming back out the extra needle. Empty containers are nice. Uh, we used to could get them in... Um, 50, I'm sorry, 100 or 500, and I think even 250. Now the only thing we can get is 500 mLs. Uh, if you want to, to mix an IV without having to use a standard bag, what you do is just take a 1,000 milliliter bag of water for injection. You withdraw out the exact amount you want and put it in here. Then you add your nutrients to it, and you can have a more exact mixture. That gets you out of the scenario of saying, okay, I'm stuck with either 100, 250, 500, or 1,000. You can use the empty bag, and you can make it whatever you want to be. If you want to have an exact isotonicity, you can shoot for that endpoint. Okay? These are, uh, of course, obviously the uh, injection ports where you add. This is where you spike the bag with the IV administration set. Um, be sure and swab those. That just shows you again where the uh, injection port is and where you spike the bag. Uh, empty evacuated containers, uh, containing a vacuum are nice when you have to fill uh, a fairly good volume. If you want to use bottles, uh, we do that for, for some practices uh, when they don't want to use bags. Uh, it, it has a nice vacuum on it. You just pull the metal off and uh, that exposes the rubber septum. Uh, you can then insert products. There's a pretty strong vacuum on that bottle, so it'll, it'll suck them right in. Now, uh, this is a little fuzzy. I apologize for that, but I want to be sure everybody knows what this port right here is. You would not believe the amount of calls we get from an office, and they say, hey, Larry, I, I spiked this bottle, but it only runs for about five minutes, and then it stopped. What, what's going on? you don't have the vent port open. If you're using a bottle, you've got to use a vented IV administration set. I know this is sort of stupid to go through because, uh, you know, everybody knows this in this room, I'm sure, but occasionally we'll get in a hurry and we forget, and it might save a little bit of embarrassment to know that you've got to have that vent open or it's not going to run. Uh, this is a vented IV administration set. There again, you see the little vent port. Be sure and have that open or the IV won't run for very long if you're using a bottle. If you're using a bag, it's no issue. You don't need a vented port. There again, just showing for emphasis sake the, the vent port. Sharps container, you need one of those obviously to put things in. All right, this is a needle-free access adapter with a swan lock type uh, set up. Now, these are neat little gadgets. What you do basically is spike your bottle, uh, your multi-nutrient bottle, whether it be B12, cal chloride, uh, whatever it is. You simply spike it with this, and then when you get ready to withdraw from the bottle, instead of having to use a needle to go through every time, you simply just lure lock your syringe into the adapter here and pull through. 